everybody. We got a special video today, ladies and gentlemen. So, this guy right here uploaded a video. My fault, my fault, my fault. This is a highly requested video. If you've been spending my IG at Cash Nasty, you wouldn't believe me. They think he got some up for the one million. So, this guy here uploaded a video, how to stop t Jack from scoring. This is the exact same guy that broke my game down. And remember I told you guys I was going to upload until after I played flight? This guy right here is a hooper hooper. Um, he's a breakdown analysis, and he does a really good job. And, um, you know, potentially you're going to be playing T-Jazz 1v1. So, I don't see no flaws within T-Jazz game other than, like, a little bit of strength, like backing up. He got really good defense, really good perimeter shooter. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of tough, you know? Like, like so, we're going to watch the video here, man, go see how to stop T-Jazz. Let's get to it. And also, I got a timer here, y'all. You know, I got some chicken in the oven. So when that thing go off, man, I'm going to be gone to get my chicken, man. I can't let that thing burn, cuz. Tristan Jazz, most notably known as T-Jazz, with a whopping 2 million followers on Instagram and almost 2 million subscribers on YouTube. He yeah, is a force to be reckoned with in the IRL YouTube Hooper community. Coming from doing trick shots, jelly fam layups, and crazy spinning rules on Instagram, which granted him a whole bunch of popularity and notoriety, he decided to transfer over to YouTube to prove that he is actually a Hooper. No one well. cares about like the trick shots stuff going, on YouTube, you but IG people well, love it. Let me it. just tell you this. This nigga is a Hooper Hooper. Yo, yeah, yo, yeah. This yeah. guy can hoop. He is a beast. He's a playmaking sharpshooter who's capable of doing everything on offense. He can dribble, pass, shoot, and finish it all while making it look sexy. He is literally an offensive threat as soon as he passes the half court line. You can even argue that he is one of the best ball handlers on YouTube, if not the best. I th That's what I'm saying, y'all. Honestly, you know what I mean? He's like the new modern day. Um, professor, you know, but a little bit more rugged and like, like I mean, like out, he's out in the trick, guys. All respect and um for uh, professor, bro. A lot of you guys don't know what professor, you know, bone click the resume, you know, growing up, bro. I used to watch them dudes all the time, bro. Uh, back then with hot sauce escalade, you know, recipe, you know, it's crazy, bro. Like TJ is like basically the modern day, bro. You know what I mean? With his own twitch with the layups, bro. He just, I think TJ has like a D. He can go D3 or something like that. I don't know, bro. But this is the definition of a hooper hooper. I, I'm not a hooper hooper. I'm just a hooper. Stop calling me a hooper hooper. I cannot go to that court and make these shots consistently on any coin. I only got one hot spot. That's why I'm not a hooper hooper yet. All right? He's on a whole other level to me. I think the question that everybody wants to know, how do you stop? TJ. Bro, don't zoom in your lips again, man. We don't want to see that, man. Let's find out. Follow me. Mm -hmm. TJ is one of the most flashiest guards I've seen on YouTube, in my opinion. This flashiness comes from his showtime handles, his circus hey. layups, and his no look passes. His game is honestly something to see. Once yes. you start watching TJ in a 1v1, a 2v2, a 3v3, or even a 5v5 video, you cannot help but just to watch his game. His offensive presence is something to watch, and once you start watching it, you just can't stop watching. Fact. He might and as well call this guy too. the IRL white chocolate. Because, bro, he reminds me of a shorter Jason Williams, who was also named White Chocolate due to his flashy play style. So in this video, we're going to break down and take a look of T-Jazz's game and figure out ways to stop T-Jazz from scoring. To do this, this means we got to look at his offensive game and his tendencies. Which when we I do don't this, see, we'll find some no loopholes within his bro. game and find a weakness to exploit. So with that being said, let's take a look at his offensive game. First off, this man is a prolific scorer who scores in bunches, which means he scores very efficiently. And He's once he starts up it's hard to cool him down Ooh, he's a deadly shooter if you leave him open consider it in and dog he's more than a hoop of hoop is bro that's it oh, step, step. Oh, excuse that excuse that terminology i can't be throwing around like that he's more than a hoop or hooper y'all this guy here hoop is hoop or hooper tjs he's like white there, right there, y'all. Did that in below, you know, at the uh, Hooper Hooper. You got Hooper. That's me right there. Right there. I got a little bit more tweaking to go. 
It's level six right here, y'all. You know them niggas who, as soon as they step on the court, you know the guard up from the three? Well, bro, he's niggas. Well, well um. E, I don't know about that, man. I know he be hooping in the hood and stuff like that, man, but he's not one of us, man. You know, he can hang with us, but he's not one of us. E. Bigger? I, I, I don't know. Stop it. Get some help. I don't know what to Bro, just run him off the three point line. The nigga can shoot, like, really, really good. And he catches fire real quickly from the three point line. Despite popular belief, I think if this was 2K, he'd have the sharp takeover. Comment down below what do you think he'll have? A playmaking, a slashing, yeah. or shot creating? I personally think he has a sharp takeover. Because yeah. look, if this guy gets hot yeah. and you leave him open, but just he know can take, it's cash. No, he can go cash shot cash creating too, though. No, it's Venmo. No, no, no. no. They, to be honest with you, you could say he can have a sharp takeover. Or he can have um, playmaker take over. Like, TJ's got all his bag. I remember like a year ago, people said he couldn't shoot. Now people like, they don't find no weakness within this game. No, no, no. It's Bank of America. So, no, bro, it's Chase. Up, like, no, no, no. It's Wells Fargo. No, video, it's, bro, it's, weakness, it's Bank. Bro. Just know that. It's Bank's. Whatever bank you can think of, it is bank. And we also cannot forget his deep range capability. He can shoot from distance, so you gotta guard up on him. And another I, I thing that, that makes him so deadly are his handles. They're tight, quick, and flashy. One wrong move and you might just end up on your butt and on a highlight reel. While defending this guy, you gotta be low, mirroring him, and stay controlled. Jumping at any and everything will only get you cooked. Thanks. And I'll explain why later. Thanks. And this guy can get to the basket. And ladies and gentlemen, like watch my video where I play 2v2. I got a raw bomb there like that. I play really good defense. You feel me? I really did. I was there. Even though he was like, he was getting off. You know what I mean? I was still holding my ground, you know? he I made him pass the ball up a couple of times. That's what you want to do when you get played against somebody like this right here, bro. And the fact that I done that, bro, like I had pat myself on the back. Because like, bro, his moves are so elusive, y'all. It's so elusive, bro. Like. Definitely one of the top ball handling people I ever play, had to play against, bro. He's a nightmare for a defender, bro. Nightmare. So he, he crossed half court. He is not afraid to, to absorb contact and use his body and get to the basket. And he can finish around the rim pretty nice. He has a lot of games to it. He has reverses. He has up and unders. He has a lot of different ways to score around the basket. And another thing. Everything inside ah! the paint, inside the key, and the elbows are all high percentage shots for him. Like, like really high. If he shoots in the painted area, just know it's what a lot of people call sweet spots. Meaning that these are shots that are delicate and fluid with a fluid touch making it money every single time they shoot. Most prolific scorers and shooters have mastered the sweet spot shots and he is one of them. So any type of shots, moving shots, difficult shots, step backs in the paint. Just know that is a sweet spot. You you right, cannot let him get there. Right. Now I know this is a long list of offensive That's feats, crazy, but what bro. makes him so deadly nice, is bro. not really these feats. It's really his calmness. He plays so relaxed that it's scary. You can tell he's really analyzing the floor and he's analyzing the defender that's playing again. He usually doesn't rush himself when he plays and that helps him a lot. That's why when he does messes up, it's very slight. And he gathers focus again really quick and locks in, especially when he's sizing up a defender. Yeah, I'll be right back. Y'all listen to this right here, man. Why I go get these chickens, man? Yeah. All right, so now that we done that, we got to take a look at his tendencies now. It was kind of hard trying to find his tendencies, mainly because he has a lot of mix-up combos. And then I realized something. I was like, wait, he has something real common through most of his clips. So then I'm like, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. This is not that bad. It's pretty simple. Huh. He has variations of size ups such as the tween tween, the tween cross tween, the double behind the back, the double cross, figure eights, and really, he has so much size ups, but none of that really matters. His game really consists of constant fakes and hesitations, meaning guys, do not jump. His favorite move is the hezzy shot fake. With this move, he does a hesitation into a shot fake and he slowly brings his opposite hand closer and closer to the ball side hand. So what this means is you got to pay attention to his hands. And another thing that I peep too, he likes to shoot the ball of dribble. Yes, we all know that, but he likes to shoot from his right side, meaning that he likes to shoot off dribble shots from his right side and that will be in his right hand. You get me? So when it's off dribble for him to actually shoot the ball, usually it's not coming from the left. He will shoot it from the left side. I'm not saying he won't. He is a pro. Bro, this video, you, I mean, bro, you tell us what we already know, bro. So basically saying he will shoot from the level two, bro. What, like, you saying how to stop. 
How can I stop T. Jazz, bro? Prolific scorer, he can actually score the ball. He's very crafty, but he usually scores from the right side. So right. keep that in mind. So guys, the reason why I highlighted the hesitation shot fake is because this move is killer. It actually sets up so many ways besides him actually hesitating into a shot. Look, when he hesitates, he can either shoot in a spot that he currently is at, or he can go the same way that he's hesitating with the, you know, whatever ball side hand he's hesitating with, or he can cross to the other side or do a whole step back. So going through film, I noticed a lot of things. He killed a lot of people with the hesitation like a lot of people and it's really the bread and butter to his game basketball is a mind game and honestly to stop this hezzy you got to tap into the game bro but guys what if i tell you there's a way to cut down the effectiveness of his hezzy by 50 percent okay guys just, just lock in with me lock in with me i notice a lot of his hezzies come from the left hand side all right so when i'm looking at it i'm like okay it's coming from the left hand side so bet what he does and i guess he does this mindlessly because it gets people a lot so if it's working why why stop it bro, but bear with me bro, if he does a, he just hezzy both hands bro like come on man i might leave a dislike bro how can i stop this dude bro hezzy with his left hand nine times out of ten he's not gonna pull up a shot off that t jazz like to get the best shot possible this wouldn't be the best shot for him because if he's completing a hezzy from the left side that means the ball would have to be in his left hand so he's doing a hezzy from the left hand, left side. So that means that if he's doing the shot fake right after, his right hand has to come closer and closer to the ball. But if he decides to actually shoot the ball, he has to touch the ball with his right hand. So if he touched the ball with his right hand, he has to bring the ball from his left hand side to his right hand side. So he could put the ball to the shooting pocket because that's where his shooting pocket is. Essentially slowing down his release and giving time for the defender to guard up. So think about it like this, if the ball is in his right hand and he does the hesitation, you gotta stay alert and be wide because he is able to shoot and if he doesn't wanna shoot, he could keep going to the right side or cross or do a step back. So that's why it is so deadly and you have to anticipate the hezzy. Anticipating this guy's head. Hey, what do you do in this hezzy right here, bro? Deadly and you, look, look you have to anticipate hezzy. the hezzy. Look at this right here. And I, bow. He got the right hand right there, bro, right? Oh God, you about to fire it up. Anticipating this guy's hezzy is a good thing to do. Guys, remember in the how to stop cash nasty video, I told you guys using someone's strength as their weaknesses is a thing. His strength is this hezzy. We can use it as a weakness. Just, just hear me out. Guys, we know how to anticipate it now, right? Okay, that's cool. But did you know that there's a whole blind spot, a loophole inside of his offensive game on that hezzy? Bro, I'm about to blow your fucking mind. All right, so let's go back to the hezzy. If he hezzies from his left hand side, guys, and he moves his right hand closer and closer to the ball, but his right hand is too close to the ball, it kind of gives you a whole precise target just to, just to swipe at it. Once you can see that, you swipe at it, and it's, it's literally a steal every time, mainly because he cannot cross back over. His right hand is way too close to the left <laughs> I likes this. So whenever T Jazz come down the court, you feel me? You do that hezzy. Since it's right here is his shooter pocket, sweet spot. I learned these type of things right here. Since I'm on the road becoming a hooper hooper, my trainer be telling me everything like, you know, the shooter pocket and stuff like that. So when, if his hand come up here, that means it has to be hezzy. Because he can't, well, he could do a sham guard too, a little bit, right? But the fact that he can't shoot like that. He got to get that shooter touch right here. So the fact he about to bow, I can like swipe. Side of his body, so he cannot cross over. It's too, the space between his left hand, the ball, and his right hand is too close. Guys, that's an easy steal every time. But you got to be very, very precise, and you got to time it correctly. If you could time it correctly, it's a steal every time, guys. Trust and the good thing about that too, there's no repercussions. If you don't get the steal, you're not gonna get broke. There ain't no Uncle Drew moments. <laughs> you're not gonna get killed. You're not gonna reach I teach moments. It, trust, you won't end up on a highlight reel. All you gotta do is just play defense again. He's not gonna he's not gonna have time to, to do anything crazy. The only thing he could do is just keep Fast. driving the same way Fast. or try to bring the ball back. Leaving you with your ankles and no repercussions.
You're welcome. Bro, if you give me broke, bro, I'm going to, bro, check my chicken nuggets, man. Jeez. Hey, let me take a pause from the video real quick. I just want to say, look, I literally found this clip after I done finished editing this video and everything, bro. I found this clip and this guy in this video literally, literally did exactly what I said to do. Literally do exactly what I said to do. The guy's Dang. such an elite defender that he's seen the precise moment to actually steal the ball. I'm telling you guys, it's there. I, I be know what I'm talking about, bro. Yo, I'm starting to get nasty with this analysis, bro. <laughs> hey, just for that, I need everybody to put the goat emoji in the fucking comments. Movement, bro. If you move, if you can move the goddamn goat emoji, we can see it again. Bro, I'm, I'm like that, bro. I don't, I don't know. Put the goat emoji, bro. All right, now that we've broken down his strength and his tendencies, let's do a quick recap. Number one, this guy's a deadly shooter, so guarding him, you yeah, gotta be want. ready to contest. Always stay on him, you gotta be on him. And if you're playing 2v2s and 3v3s, 5v5s, you gotta chase him off the three-point line. You gotta actually move. Like, if it's 2K, think about it as off-ball pests. You gotta be a pest, you gotta be in him, because he is so, he, he is so, so, so conserved and so calm. I guarded TJ ass, bro. But the thing is, bro, it is like, once you press tight on him, bro, like T Jazz know how to do the you know the Kyrie thing where they push all where you stand your own. You, I could guard like this. He'll like kind of like use that as a leverage to go forward, bro. You know, and that's how I guard T Jazz left. You know, and shout out to my you know my trainer. You know, T Jazz he good at it like his size up. Say you have a dribble the ball. If I guard him left, he going to attack. He going left. He going to attack my right right side. And so that's going to force me to move and open me up. TJ has already know how to read the defense, bro, but I feel that, though. You can't let him be calm. You got to actually annoy him. If you annoy him, it will kind of throw off his game. Try to get in his head. You got to stay low, stay composed, and do not jump while playing him unless you know he's going to shoot the ball because his hezzies and his fakes, trust. That will put you on his highlight reel and give him easy just, shots every I single time. So please. TJ, Even if he you, does I, get inside, I, I, or if you get beat and you're trying to recover, just stay under control, my guy. Look, it's either he's going to finish with the up and under, or he's going to do a pump and have you fucking flying, jumping like a kangaroo. Or he even might, might just try to break you with a snatchback and have you sliding like it's roll bounce or some shit. Guys, you got to stay wide with active hands and active feet, but be composed. That's how you guard people like him. And just like playing a, a play shot in 2K. Yeah, they could dribble. They could do all that behind the three-point line, but you got to stay in front of them because if you don't stay in front of them, they will shoot it from deep. So you still got to play defense. You got to play on it, and you cannot jump. And the last and final thing that I can say about guarding T-Jazz, you can't be scared. You cannot be intimidated. If you're intimidated, facts. he will know, and he's going to eat you alive. Facts. Yeah, facts. You cannot be intimidated. You got to play up on him. Play defense. Do not be scared, and just be rigid. And I promise you, you can, you'll be able to stop him. He is guardable. You got to stay low. You got to stay tight and do not allow him to size you up. This applies a lot of pressure and makes him really rush the game. But again, he is also very composed too. So he will try. He really will try to get, you know, creative. But the thing is, you may be inclined to getting sauce. You might just slip. You might just end up. It's not Mike. It's not Mike. On a highlight reel, but trust. That shit will make him tired and it will slow him down. And even allowing him a little bit of space, you know, at least arm distance so you can recover if you got blown by. You know, if you're slower, you can do that. But you gotta hey, make man, sure hey. you're still rigid. Hey man, thanks so much, man. I gotta man, got get this chicken right here, man. You tripping, man. You talking way too much, bro. Hey, I appreciate that though, man. You know, I really, really, really did need that, bro.
Really did need this right here, bro. Cause um, you know, with TJ to come to cap, we could do some collabs, bro. You know, possibly, you know, show the two v two, possibly one v one, bro. You know, it's just from ready to be to play hoop for hoop. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah. You good at what you do, fam? Good video, man. Tell me what you guys think about it, man. We got this thing. Come on, eh?